Hey guys, here's Louie. And on this video, I'm going to explain what's the first thing I am attacking on this car. So the first problem was that the steering shaft was not mating correctly, nice and straight to the gearbox because the firewall, it looks like in that area, they yanked it, they pulled the car and it kind of like bent out of shape that area, but that's already solved. So what's the second repair I'm doing on the car? So on the last video on the measurements for convertible first gen F bodies, convertibles, I explain how this A pillar here door jam was out of whack because when I bought the car, the door hinges that came with the car, somebody torched them and made it to be able to be sliding back and forth. And this is crazy. This is definitely not original, not the way it was made. So I know there was something wrong, but I came to the conclusion that the A pillar was pretty bent up. And I explained in the last video that I was going to cut the A pillar off of the 69 convertible car that Jonathan left here. But I was thinking about another a way how to attack things. So always try to have a plan A and a plan B is what I'm trying to say. And I went as far as marking where the plug wells were from factory. And I even started cutting them, but I did not go all the way through. I never go through. I always take my time and I stopped. And the reason why I stopped, which this is an easy fix. I just tack weld it and grind it nice and smooth. The reason I stopped because I had to think a little and say, boy, do I really need to cut this A pillar out? And I started scratching my head. Louis started scratching his head and thinking to himself. And I said, well, I'm going to try to fix this. And if I can't fix it, it's coming off. So I kind of did some old school body work here. And with that, I am saying that I used a sly hammer. Now, this sly hammer is not... It wasn't made to use on a body of a car. It was made to pull axles, okay? But this gauge metal here, this steel here, is really is a heavy gauge, okay? It's strong. It's not like it's a, it's a quarter panel or a fender or a door, all right? This is heavy stuff here. So I cannot use a regular um, auto body side hammer. So I decided to use this. I think she's like five pounds or something like that. The slide hammer. And what I did was um, I used stuck guns before. It's like a stud welder and, uh, and pulled things before. I don't like it. Personally, they rip the metal sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't weld correctly and you got to constantly keep welding it. And I don't want to go through the back and forth. And that's just my experience with that tool. So what I did was I drilled a very small hole, okay, where I saw it was bent. And she was dinged up here, here, and here. So I had to do one, two, and three. The reason you don't see the hole here because I welded it already and grind it down. I have to weld this up and this up and grind it down. You guys will never see that I ever did anything here. The process I use is I use a bit of um, small bit. I forget the size, but it's tiny. I use a sheet metal screw. So these are self tappers. All right, that I use for other things. I never even used it for this, but this time I did. And I sneak just the tip. There's no tip here because it was welded and I cut it off. But I just sneak the tip on this because I'm not trying to, to drill all the way to hit the, the plate that moves your door adjustment. Okay, so your door mounts on this plate here. 
all right, that moves and has the adjustments for the door. I'm not trying to go all the way down to that. I'm just trying to screw into the sheet metal, the top sheet metal. And what I do is I put it into the hole. I don't know if you guys can see that hole there. Right here. And I put the tip in there and I get my welder over there. And I just tack weld one on the top, one on the bottom, one to the left, and one to the right. And it's enough. Then I put the slide hammer in and I start pulling. When you're doing this kind of work, please do not pull so hard. Little taps, little taps, little pulls, little pulls, little pulls. And you'll feel with your hands if you got it, yes or no. And you just keep repeating the process. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I did check the door out already. And the second, the first hinge here on the top, what an improvement. I was already matching my rocker corner here. See, your corner, your, the corner of the front door and the bottom is supposed to match that rocker right there. It did that. She moved nice and forward, okay? And I had the, the, the slant. Remember, I told you that that hinge was up and down straight. Not supposed to be like that. If you guys take a good look to this hinge here, okay? She is this way. She's at an angle. She's not straight. She's at an angle. And I did achieve that angle now on the passenger side. So the door is measuring good. She's giving me good um gaps, body gaps on that side, on this side. And she's so nice and tight now that here is your interior dome light, dash lights, and your interior light switch. Okay, this is your door jam switch that when the door closes, it will turn off the lights. And when your door opens and this plunger here comes out, your, your lights will come back on. Before, it was, it was like all the way up to here and I was going nuts. Like, wow, there's a real big problem here. But so far, so good. So today, Louis is going to attack the bottom. Okay. So I already felt this. And you guys kind of could see that it's, it has a ding. It's bent in. Now, I have the patch panel to here. This is your lower door jam A-pillar section, which is notorious for the first gen Firebirds to rot out here. And this one is rotted out in the bottom badly. Okay, and she also got dented here terribly, but I don't want to cut all the way to the top. The panel does come up to like about here, but I'm not going to do that because the metal is not messed up here. All right. I want to fix this first. And when I finish pulling all this out, put the bottom hinge on the door, mount the door, top and bottom hinge. And see if everything works out. And then I will cut maybe here down and put the new panel. And why why would I go through that work? A lot of people will start asking themselves, why you just don't cut it off if you have the panel from here down? It's because this is a 68 fiber and 68 fiber A pillar door um, section here has this indent here okay 69 don't and if i would have used the 69 door jam it would not have given me that and if you precisely have the eyes um trained like i do on these cars i would have known something fishy is going on there and the new panel also do not have it let me show it so these are the new panels okay this is the new panel that I ordered for this car. And as you guys could see here, it doesn't have that indent right here. This is not a dent. This is from factory. Okay. The other side also has it, the driver's side. So she, I have enough material there as you guys could see, but she cuts into this part here and I don't like that. So I'm going to try to massage this and then cut it. A little lower come out put that sucker in and everything should be beautiful here she also was dented here and as you guys could see I pulled it out I like the way she's feeling now okay and um, I'll be welding this up in my opinion 
the slide hammer, there's nothing wrong with that tool. It was designed to use it for body work. Now, why did it get a bad rap? It's because the person using it back in the day, if they was lazy, they would not weld the hole up and then grind it down smooth. They'll just put some bondo on it. And if you ever seen a panel that that's been um, worked like that before, when you look at the backside, you see like little worms hanging out. And it's because they pulled it with a slide hammer, they slapped on some filler, and the filler went through the hole. That's not the correct way. Weld the hole up, and you'll be fine. So I'm going to be attacking this, and I'll bring you guys back when I have pulled those dents out. All right, guys. So I use the slide hammer, and I push one, two, and three out. Okay? And with my feel of my hand here, I'm happy how she feels. She's supposed to have a little slant here going into where the hinge will mount before she was really deep in and I weld up the holes, okay? I weld up that hole. Also, I did some cutting with the spot welder cutter. I welded those holes. I'm ready to grind down everything smooth. As you guys can see, she will be nice and smooth. You won't see nothing there. Okay, that's that's all he welded. It's, it's, it's not grinded yet. It's nice and flat. Okay, so I'm happy how everything's looking so far. Now I'm going to grind it down. And let me tell you, this belt sander here from Harvest Freight, 100 bucks, and it works excellent. That's what I'm going to use on these wells right now. I'll bring you right back. So I did the process of welding everything shut that I did that you guys seen earlier. I'm really happy with the results. Okay, nice and smooth. Can't see nothing. I'm telling you. All right. So so far I'm happy here. All right. I'm gonna put on the hinges on the door and the door to see how it fits. And if everything here is perfect, I'm happy. I'm moving on. Because like I explained before, this will come off. Alright guys, so working the A-pillar door jam was a success and I'm really excited about it. I was able to put the hinges that Jonathan gave me, move the door forward, okay? I still have some tweaking to do, but I was able to move it forward. All right, and the height is not bad at all. The gap here is great, okay, it's not bad. The door still needs to come out a little bit more flat for it to line up with the quarter panel, but I could work that in the future. I just needed to know if I was able to fix that A pillar, yes or no, or cut it off and put another one. But thanks God, I worked it out with the slide hammer some hammer and dolly on it also came out great and i didn't use a striker but i tack welded it here because it kept opening and closing i'm here by myself and that gets pretty annoying after a while but i tack welded it here okay and i mean this body line is really nice now going towards the bottom it opens up but i think it's because whoever put this quarter skin did a terrible job so I know from here forward I need to move towards the back and start working on the quarter skin which I have brand new ones back there and that's what I'm going to use for the car but I'm really excited that I was able to use original door hinges and make it work now check this out so the corner here on the door was driving me nuts because you guys that also build these cars know that your corner of your door is supposed to be lined up with your quarter panel. I mean, sorry, with your auto rocker. Well, when I took a look at the back, it was probably like that thick of body filler, okay? And they also didn't do it right because they more to an angle, if you get what I'm saying. It's not coming straight 
down it's coming towards an angle and that's not correct all right so if i get this paint stick here and put it on the right way that it's supposed to be nice and nice and down straight you guys could see right there see how she's at as an angle and this needs to be right here to match to match that quarter panel so whoever did the repair here was off not by too much that won't take nothing to fix all right it's about that gap right there if you can see so i'll do that in the future but now that i have the a pillar all sorted out it's time to take this car apart i'll put it up on my jack stands okay and time to get busy from here on guys thank you for watching bye bye